halftime at Arizona Stadium where the Ducks are leading the Wildcats of Arizona 14 to 10. Much has been made of the fact that Oregon, Oregon State, many of the schools uh, in the state of Oregon in the Pacific Northwest have had problems as of many around the country with the finding new sources of income. Uh, budgets continue to rise with increased costs and such. We thought we'd give you a little insight as to, and a little update, to one source of funding that the Oregon Athletic Department hopes continues to bring money into the coffers. When sports action began last fall, it was considered a godsend for intercollegiate athletics in the state of Oregon. The lottery, based on point spreads of NFL and NBA games, was expected to generate up to $10 million for athletic programs like Oregon, Oregon State, and Portland State. But in the last 12 months, several developments have placed sports action in jeopardy. The NBA has filed suit against the state, claiming the game infringes on NBA trademark and property rights. And Representative John Bryant of Texas has tacked an amendment onto the omnibus crime bill that would do away with state lotteries based on point spreads in all states, of course, except Nevada and in Atlantic City. The amendment has the support of the NFL, NBA, and Major League Baseball, who are playing hardball in Congress. Any people who are interested in having an NFL franchise or an NBA franchise or perhaps having a Major League Baseball team are being pressured by the various entities that if they don't support this program, then there's very little likelihood that they'll have professional sports in those areas. That's unfair, of course, but it's the best tactic they have, and that's what they're, what they're going to use. The Oregon congressional delegation, led by Representative Peter DeFazio, is working to kill the amendment in the House. Not enough pressing needs in Washington, D.C. they got to pick on Oregon sports action game. Bottom line, I think we'll have it next session. I think it'll be up and running. We need to make some improvements. We need to look at special events uh, that are fun, like heavyweight boxing matches. And uh, I think it'll be a successful funding formula for us. Why is sports action so important to this state's intercollegiate athletics? The U of O currently has a budget of $11 million for athletics, but only two of the 14 sports bring in more money than they spend, football and men's basketball. The other 12 sports have a deficit of up to $1.6 million. Sports Action would allocate 50% for women's programs and 70% for the non-revenue sports. And a lot of people don't understand, we're not talking about funding football and basketball, men's football and basketball. We're talking about a, a track program here at the U of R that loses at least a half million dollars a year. But two shoe companies were born right down the street here. Uh, we're talking about a women's gymnastics program that was fourth in the country and cut completely out here at the University of Oregon. No men's baseball anymore. Those are the types of programs we want to get up and running again. The State Board of Higher Education has offered some relief on a one-time basis, granting tuition waivers for non-revenue sports, but mandating a balanced budget. And at its June meeting, the board also urged the legislature to uncouple the sports action money from the Megabucks Fund, a move that might mean more play by more people. Right now, people really enjoy the game. They thought it was a lot of fun, but there was a lot of anger that people were really unhappy that when it was decoupled and we didn't get the two and a half million dollars that we would have received last year. So I think uh, the legislature has received, received that message loud and clear. And if they have, then they'll, certainly they'll decouple it. And I think that enough heat's been put on enough, enough legislators that I won't have the problem I had last session where we actually moved the bill out of committee without the wall. And then I had the chairman of T&E come back, Trade and Economic Development come back and say he would oppose it on the Senate floor unless the wall was placed back in the bill. But all this becomes a moot point if sports action is killed by Congress. And here's where the public can help. One of the things they've got to do is talk with our, uh, our congressional representatives. They should talk to their United States representatives, both United States senators, and let them know that they think sports action should continue to be able to operate in the state of Oregon. 